All right, so what I wanted to do was to show you how, uh, number one, you can embed YouTube videos into Active Inspire, and then also how to adjust them so that they can fill your flip chart. So you may already know how to Im embed the YouTube video, but uh, the question you may have had or uh, the issue you've been dealing with is trying to make them fill the, the flip chart screen a little bit um, more. There's an advantage to embedding a YouTube video into a flip chart, and it has to do with this tool right here, this camera tool. Uh, and I'll show you a little bit about how that works. So our goal is really to have a, a YouTube video embedded in a flip chart that looks something like this, fills the entire flip chart, and uh, and then we can play it directly uh, in Active Inspire, and then use this camera tool down here. So the first thing I wanted to briefly discuss uh, was the topic of screen resolution. Okay, so uh, with screen resolution, there are a lot of different options. So the screen resolution that I currently use is uh, 1024 by 768. This screen resolution uh, works best with the projector that I have, and it. Uh, it may be a different resolution that, than what you are currently using. Uh, if you do not have a resolution that is um, it's called native to your projector, uh, then it may look grainy or it may be too small to read. There are other issues that come up. So um, you want to adjust the screen resolution so that it fits your projector. Most of us have a projector that would work best at 1024 by 768. Now, the way that I can check that or adjust that would be to uh, show the desktop, <clears throat> right-click on the desktop, and go to Properties. And the Display Properties will come up. I can then click on the Settings tab. You can see that I have two monitors set up, a primary display that has a much lower screen resolution, and another display that has a higher screen resolution. I can basically see more and this is a pretty good way to understand screen resolution. So I can see a much greater area with this other monitor. So uh, if I want to adjust the screen resolution, I take this slider bar and I move it left or right. Okay. So uh, <clears throat> some of you may have uh, maybe 800 by 600. That's not a very good resolution for either the projectors or for viewing most web pages. 1024 is usually the small uh, smallest you want to go, so we'll dump that in the trash can. Okay, so here's our goal. How do we get this uh, YouTube video embedded in our flip chart like this? Let's go ahead and first open up a new flip chart. So when I open up a new flip chart, I see uh, a, a blank uh, page, and uh, the first thing I have to do is go find a YouTube video. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, open up um, YouTube now. YouTube. And uh, let's go ahead and um, just do a Khan Academy video. Khan Academy. And this will be biology. So uh, let's go ahead and just do this one on the top of the list, the parts of a cell. We'll click on that YouTube video. Let's talk a little bit about it. It automatically plays. We'll just press pause here and I'll scroll down and I'm going to click on share. Now I get this uh, direct link to the YouTube video, but that would just be used to open up uh, a web browser and it's going to be um, much more interesting to, to use all of our tools that we have in Active Inspire. So we're going to embed. So we click on embed, and then uh, we get some embed code uh, right here that's highlighted. The next thing you want to do is make sure that these checkboxes, all of them, are unchecked. Okay. The default is 560 by 315. That's what uh, it generates the embed code as, 560 by 315, much too small uh, to fill the flip chart screen and especially for what I am using in my screen resolution. So I'm going to use a custom screen resolution. What I'm going to type in is 1000. And when I type in 1000, it automatically adjusts the height to 
to maintain the aspect ratio and then it adjusts my code automatically. Now when I click up here it highlights the code. I right click and copy or use my shortcut of control C and then I switch over to Active Inspire. Now I'm going to insert link and embedded HTML. Uh, now I paste in control V or right click paste click OK. Now what I'll first notice and this is kind of an issue that I was dealing with initially is trying to get that size of a video to fit. So no matter what I did or where I clicked I could not get I couldn't figure out how to resize this uh, media window here. So the place to go is the browser. So I want to resize this so the whole thing fits. I'm going to go over to view and then browser and uh, <clears throat> you may be in the page browser or the voting browser or the action browser uh, but we want to be here in the object browser. So we click on that and then this shows all of our layers that we have here and we are going to click on media one. And as soon as I click on media one, I get my grab handles and I can resize so that it fits my flip chart. So I'm just going to go there. Now I can move it. And <clears throat> it looks like I'm pretty close to being where I need to be. You know that it fits when um, those scroll bars disappear. So the scroll bars now are gone. It looks like it fits perfectly. I'm going to raise it up a little bit higher so that the students can see it. Now, if I'm done with the video, I can just click anywhere on the flip chart and those grab handles disappear. Now to get them back, I have to go back into my object browser and click on that, uh, that object, that media one, and then I can move it again. Okay. Uh, notice this is widescreen and that's why it doesn't fill my screen because I am not using a widescreen resolution. So, uh, here things seem to fit pretty well and now when I play my video let's talk a little bit about this uh, we got the volume pretty low Val, done a lot of videos where we deal with here. things that go on inside of them but I haven't done one where we just talk about the entire cell and uh, he'll draw some I'm sure very interesting pictures and as he's drawing these pictures and maybe the students are watching these uh, I may want to uh, save that picture because we want to review it or process it later uh, and discuss it. Uh, so as the video is playing I'm going to hit the camera tool and then take a picture. And so uh, the video will continue to play and maybe there's some other things that we want to take pictures of and uh, this is pretty good. So the video is going to go through and um, taking pictures along the way so that we can then uh, review. And we could review with clickers, and we can have the students come up to the board. There's a lot of things that we can do with these snapshots of the videos. Okay. So now let's say that we are done with our, um, our video. It's over. And uh, we want to talk about some of these pictures. Well, it stacks them up behind the video. Okay, It's on a different layer. And uh, what I found is best is just to actually move this video out of the way. Okay, uh, played with some of the layering, and it's just kind of the way that the, that it operates in Active Inspire. You just have to get it out of the way. So what I would do is get back in my object browser and click on the media so that I have those grab handles again, and I am just going to um, drag it up out out of the way. So push it down out of the way. It's off the screen now. And now I can go through each video or each uh, picture of the video and talk about it. Maybe I want to um, have the students come on up and identify specific terms and um, so um, they can come up and underline or maybe you want them to uh, circle or or highlight uh, whatever it might be uh, specific terms that's kind of a weird color of highlighter uh, you can have them highlight certain things or identify certain things so you can have them come on up to the board and, and review uh, so 
Once I'm done with that one, I usually just throw them in the trash, move on to the next one, we'll discuss that, and we'll just continue until we've talked about uh, each uh, picture. Okay, So I can use these pictures on tests, or I can put them in another flip chart and review them later, so it's a good, good way to uh, review those videos. And that's the best advantage I see to putting uh, these videos into an active inspire flip chart and, and embed them so now let's say that I want to bring my my video back one thing that you want to be sure that you're using is the page zoom uh, over here uh, we just click down and I'm going to zoom uh, out I guess there's my video uh, remember to move it I would have to, oh that time the graph handles came up, uh, if they don't come up you would have to make sure that you go into the object browser, click on the media and then drag it up. Okay, and It looks like I may have lost some of my size here. I may have adjusted it so that looks good and put it where I want it. Go back to my fit to height which I think is what I had it fit in, yep. And then uh, everything looks good and I can play it again. So uh, now that I'm ready to save this, file, save as, one thing I wanted to show you about this, um, so if I go ahead and sell con, uh, let's go ahead and save it in this folder. One thing that you'll notice about these videos now is that they are tiny because there really isn't a video at all in here. There's just embed code. That's it. So I got this uh, really nice video, uh, but it's going onto the internet to play it. It's not downloaded to your hard drive. So I encourage you, whenever possible, let's go ahead and look at this thing. So if I were to navigate to where I have this thing saved, um, here's my U drive in cells, <clears throat> and let's say cell con flip chart. That is 23 kilobytes, and it has a 21-minute uh, video in it. Okay, so if you're in the habit of using videos, which is great, I say whenever possible, please embed them into your flip charts rather than um, uh, inserting them. And um, so, I hope that helped you in embedding videos in your flip charts. Uh, enjoy.